Um, hello, and thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Radu Gheorghe. I work at Sematext. Work at Sematext again. Um, I'm also writing uh, at this book called Elasticsearch in Action. Um, other things I like to do, I like to dance with my wife. There's me there without a head. Um, and I like to sing with my son. There's me there with long hair. Um, I'm here to talk about centralized logging. Um, so you have a bunch of servers, they're all logging, and you want to get all those logs into a central data store, um, and then be able to use that data when you want to search through all of it, when you have multiple servers, multiple applications, um, and to do statistics. So we can get metrics from those logs and make graphs out of that. So we'll have a look at how that can be done. And uh, we'll start by looking at the central piece, the store. Um, then we'll look at how you can send your logs to it, and then about searching and statistics. And finally, we'll um, zoom in a bit into the logs themselves, because some of them can be you know, structured, unstructured. We'll look about that uh, at that a bit later. So earlier this, uh, this year, we did a poll um, where we asked um, DevOps people, if you centralize your logs, where do your logs end up? And most of them said Elasticsearch. Um, and I think the reason Elasticsearch is so popular for storing logs is that it's fast and it's scalable. And another reason for that is because there are lots of tools that can help you do that. Uh, you might some recognize some of them here. I'll touch some of those. Um, so basically, these are the ones that you, I mean, they're not the only ones, but you know, the ones I've, I'm aware of, that you can use to ship your logs to Elasticsearch. And the ones over there are th the ones that you can use to search and uh, to do searches in analytics. And the way most of them works is by using Elasticsearch's um, REST API. So you send a JSON over HTTP with your log or logs, and you get back a JSON reply saying, hey, I've indexed your logs. Um, and on the searching and analytics side, it's more of the same. You send a JSON with your query, and you get back a JSON with, with the results. Um, so I said, oh my gosh, anyway. Um, I said Elasticsearch uh, is fast, and it's fast because it indexes your logs. So uh, being indexed, you can get them really quickly. Um, but a lot of people ask, OK, how much can I expect? And uh, I'll just say, if you get like a $500 laptop, uh, I would expect you to be able to store something like 200 million of your average Apache logs into it and still be able to do searches and statistics and get your uh, reply back in under a second. This is, was, this is what I would expect. Um, and I also would expect you to be able to get uh, logs in at a rate of 10,000 new logs per second. Oh, I was supposed to say something here. So that bear over there is the Berlin bear, for those of you who don't know. Um, so 200 million logs means if the whole Berlin uh, accesses your website every day, you would be able to store those logs for two months. Now, 10,000 new logs per second means if the whole Berlin gets to your website within six minutes, with that laptop, you should be able to, to hold that load. Um, and, but if you do that, the, if you do that at 10,000 per second, your 200 million would obviously not be two months, it would be something like six hours. So that's when, if you want to store more logs, you have to add more uh, servers. <laughs> um, so that's where scalability comes into play. Um, and by default, when you, when you send your logs to Elasticsearch, and let's just assume you use a single container, a single index, uh, Elasticsearch by default will break that data into five shards. And we will also try to replicate that data once, but if, when you have only one node, that makes no sense, so it just doesn't do it. But as you add more servers to your cluster, and they would automatically see each other by default via multicast, then 
it will allocate those replicas and it will also move around all those shards and replicas so that you end up with a more or less balanced uh, cluster where you have uh, your data sliced across the, let's say, four nodes. And I'm just going to show you a small screencast of how this might work. So here on the right side, I have Elasticsearch Head, which is uh, uh, a nice little tool that you can use in your browser to watch on Elasticsearch. Now, there's nothing here because I have no cluster right now. I've just downloaded Elasticsearch from the website and unpacked it. So what is going to happen now is that I'll start Elasticsearch. And you should see it in there, but we have no data. So, so now I'm using the, the REST API to just send something that you know, might be a log um, into Elasticsearch. Um, and Elasticsearch will, will take care of pretty much everything for me. So it will create uh, a new index. Uh, it will detect that my message field over there is a string, so I don't have to pre-configure anything to get started. So you see, this is our five-shard index. These are the replicas, replicas which are not assigned yet, because we only have one node. So now I'm starting a second node. I'm doing this on the same computer, but you know, in production you'll probably use more. Um, and it joins the cluster. It detects uh, it via multicast, and now you can see that the uh, replicas, uh, that the content of, of our index get replicated to the second node. So now I'm starting a third node. Should be there in a minute. Less than a minute. But <laughs> and some of the shards will automatically go from the two nodes to this, to this third node. And it will, be, it will be more of the same when we start, start the fourth node. some awkward silence. Um, so now you can use the REST API, as I said, for, for shipping logs, for doing queries, but you can also use it for doing a lot of administrative tasks, like uh, changing some configuration settings. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the REST API to shut down nodes. So I'm shutting down the last node I started. And you should leave the cluster in a moment. You see the teenage warhead there. Now it's gone. And because of the replicas, um, even if one node leaves, you still have at least a complete set of data. So Elasticsearch will automatically uh, replicate the data that it is missing because of the left node uh, to the remaining nodes. So you can scale both up and down. I mean, not up and down, like this. <laughs> um, and we're back to where we started. So, um, how do you send your logs to Elasticsearch? One of the tools I really like for doing this is called Logstash. And uh, you might have heard about it uh, yesterday if we went, you went to the open source uh, logging talk. Um, I really like it because it's really DevOps friendly. And uh, it, you, you can see what it does. It has, uh, it, it has three threads, and one's the input. And you can use lots of inputs. You can uh, make it receive syslog. You can make it tail your log files. You can e even do stuff like uh, make it watch your inbox and send the messages there as logs. You have some filters, which uh, you know you can do. You can change your logs in there. So, for example, um, you can if you have Java stack traces, it will uh, mesh them in a single event, so you don't have to look over them. Um, and you also have lots of outputs. I mean, there are lots of each of those. There are like 35 inputs, you know. Um, and one of them is obviously Elasticsearch. You can also use, send the data to different data stores. Uh, for example, a lot of people use, um, geez, I lost the word. Anyway, Redis, OK. You use Redis for, uh, for buffering. So you have your. Um, your server that's logging, use Logstash to, with the Redis output to send your logs to Redis. And then on the other side, you have another Logstash that gets your logs from Redis and puts it to Elasticsearch. So you have a buffer there in the middle, just in case your Elasticsearch uh, cluster goes down, for example. 
then you, your logs get buffered in uh, Redis and um, uh, sent to Elasticsearch whenever that becomes available. Um, so let's look at a bit, let's zoom in a bit more. So for example, if you have your application that's logging to syslog, for example, you can, uh, out of your syslog daemon, you will get uh, the things you, you log from your application and also stuff like the date, the host name, and so on. And that's a standard format. And Logstash gets that syslog and puts it in a nice JSON and sends it over to Elasticsearch. Um, and once you get your logs in, it's time to search. And again, if you've been to the talk yesterday, you might have seen Kibana in action. Um, Kibana is... Uh, uh, a really nice tool that you can use for both searching and analytics. So uh, this new version out that you can use, um, y you can use it like a dashboard. It's actually called a dashboard somewhere. Um, so you can you can add widgets to it. You can add a search widget where you can, you know, like you have this table here and you can search for what you want. But you can also add all sorts of graphs, um, which is really nice, you can also have multiple dashboards and stuff like that. Um, okay, so now that we went to searching, let's look a bit more at the logs. And uh, I guess many of you have seen logs that initially make no sense, like that thing, Mike 20 mouse zero. What does that mean? And you might ask the developer or read some documentation and you'll find out that, for example, this means the user ID Mike spent 20 minutes on our website, ended up buying a mouse, and did so successfully. And now this is a very compact format, and once you get used to it, I think it's you know it's easier to read. Um, now there might be some glitches when you search. So for example, if you search for mouse, you might get back uh, a log where mouse was the name, the user ID, and stuff like that. And when you want to do analytics, it it might be more of the same. How do you know what's the average time? You'll have to parse those logs. So I think for most purposes, a, g a good thing would be to structure those logs and to index them uh, in a structure format, like JSON, like uh, Elasticsearch talks JSON, and you can, uh, you can have fields from your logs in each field uh, of the JSON. Um, and one of the very good tools to do that is Logstash. Um, you can use a filter that's called grok, which is like a um, user-friendly interface to regular expressions. Um, and you can say, OK, this is my first word is going to be the field user ID, and the second one is a number, and it's going to be in the field time, and so on. And Logstash will happily parse that for you and is able to construct your JSON that you can then send to Elasticsearch. So then, when you search in uh, Mike, the user ID, you know that you won't get an item that's called Mike or something like that. Um, OK. But this might be a problem if the format changes. So if, if you get a new field there that's the browser, for example, um, then you would have to adjust um, your configuration, because otherwise parsing would fail. Um, and I think uh, a good thing to do here, if you, especially if you have a format that's changing all the time, is to log in JSON in the first place. And if you log into JSON, uh, then you won't have to uh, make Logstash use regular expressions, which is also expensive in terms of CPU. But you can also use other tools. And I'll come back to syslog here. Um, for example, um, not for example, just <laughs> um, our syslog and syslog ng, which are the uh, most popular syslog daemons, they both use this um, this standard uh, called CEE, in which because if you take a syslog message, that's a free format. You can put everything, anything in there, but uh, you can put you can start the message with a cookie at CEE there, and you can put a JSON in the rest of the of the syslog, and you can have your, your syslog daemon parse that for you and output it in whichever format you want. What's more, if uh, you use our syslog, for example, our syslog also can output to Elasticsearch. So for example, if um, uh, your application, you can, you can have your application log in, uh, in JSON, and you can have our syslog to say, OK, is this a JSON? 
If it's not, then you can output it to Elasticsearch just like any other syslog. I mean, you have the date, you have the severity, and then the message, which is the format that you choose. Or you can say, my message is this JSON, and it can parse your JSON, and you can say, you can output it to Elasticsearch with all the fields that you defined from your application, which is useful because um, most of the time, I mean, if it's your custom application, then you already have the variables in there. You know, you can, out, you can make a structured document uh, very easily. If it's not, most of the of applications, you can configure a, lo um, a logging format, right? Like Apache does. You can make Apache log JSON. That there's no problem in that. So then you can, you, you don't have to parse those logs anymore. I mean, you have, but you don't have to guess what field is which. Um, so yeah, this is it. We've looked at some of the tools. Um, we also use them in this uh, SaaS product that we have, which is called Logscene, and you can check it out at our booth if you want to. Um, we're also hiring, and that's it.